Hi there, so in this video I'm going to go through the solutions uh, to problem sheet one uh, in section one uh, of my course. So this first one here we've got to prove that P implies P so we can I guess uh, we've got to prove that if P is true then P is true so we use the intro tactic uh, intro HP uh, I mean we call it anything intro banana there uh, we introduce the hypothesis that P is true and we call that hypothesis banana and now we've got to prove that P is true, so we do exact banana. There we go, that's done that one. And now we're down to 10 goals. The, the idea is we get, want to get this down to zero goals. Uh, so this is a slightly sort of a shocking example. P implies Q implies P because where do the brackets go? So I say something about that uh, in the comments just above, just above the example. But you can also see, if you start hovering around here, you see that uh, I can't get it to just highlight P implies Q, but I can get it to just highlight Q implies P. And that's because that's where the brackets are. It's P implies open brackets, Q implies P. Uh, so I've got to prove that P implies something. So let's do intro HP. Let's assume that P is true. And now I've got to prove that if Q is true, then P is true. So intro HQ. Uh, we'll now assume that Q is true. And now we've got to prove that P is true. So of course, exact HP will do that. Uh, just, just to show off there, I'll show you the assumption tactic. Uh, uh, it solves a goal as long as, as long as the goal is exactly one of our assumptions. And right now we have this hypothesis uh, that P is true. So there you go. Uh, that solved that one. Now, now this one, P implies P implies Q implies Q. So I guess let's do intro. We could do intros, couldn't we? Intros HP. Uh, we'll introduce the hypothesis that P is true. And now also we need the hypothesis that P implies Q, so HPQ, let's call it that. We don't have to call it HPQ, that's a pretty sensible name for it. Uh, and now we've got to deduce Q, well P implies Q, so we can uh, apply HPQ. And now we've got to deduce that P is true, and that's exact HP. Uh, so that's on that one. Uh, eight to go. Now what have we got here? Uh, intros... Uh, HPQ uh, and HQR and HP. I think those would be the names of those tactics. So there we go. So we've now got the hypotheses that P implies Q, that Q implies R, and that P is true. And now we've got to deduce R. Uh, so we could apply HQR, HQR, if I can type it correctly. Uh, and we could um, now what? Now we've got to prove that Q is true. So let's apply HPQ. Uh, there. I mean, I should say, we can argue forwards, right? I could just do exact HPQ HP. That would, that would solve the goal immediately. Uh, but if you're not ready for little tricks like that, apply HPQ and then exact HP. There we go, that's done that one. Uh, now what? Oh, this is a slightly funny one. So we can do intros HPQR, uh, HPQ and HP. I think that's what those would be called, yep. Um, and now the only thing that... Uh, implies that R is true is HPQR. If we do apply HPQR uh, there, then suddenly we get two goals, right? I, I mentioned this on the uh, in the documentation of the applied tactics. So what's going on here is that HPQR says if P is true, then if Q is true, then R is true. That's what that hypothesis says. If P is true and if Q is true, then R is true. So when we apply HPQR, uh, we can see that we've got to now deduce HP and HQ. And now if you're a real pro, you see we have two goals now. So what we should really do uh, there is, uh, to put, is to put some little squiggly brackets uh, around everything. So now you see in each, in each one of these goals here, you see we, those are our two different goals now, proving P and proving Q. Uh, but we've somehow separated them off from each other. So now we only have one goal, but we've got two sorries. Uh, this one looks pretty easy. This is exact HP uh, there. And now this one, uh, we've got to deduce, I guess, moving backwards, I guess this is apply HPQ uh, and then uh, and then exact HP. There we go. And that one is done and six to go. Oh, so now these are the harder ones, uh, but uh, you know, while we're here, I may as well I may as well do them. HPR, HSQ, HRT, HQR, HS. 
um, there we go. We can just cheat, probably use the CC tactic there, you see there. Uh, this, is, this is like we've got a, we've got a maze, right? Something implies C, I guess apply, apply HRT would be uh, uh, the correct thing. But now we've got to deduce the R is true. You see, we have to deduce which way to go now. HQR says that something implies R, and HPR says that something implies R as well. And we have to sort of think a little bit about you know what the correct route is. Well, I don't actually see any other P. That's what the CC tactic does. It solves that maze. Um, uh, but uh, we I don't see any more P's here. So HPR is a disaster. We could we could get rid of it. Clear HPR. I mean, you don't have to do that, but it was a, a red herring anyway. Apply HQR. Uh, now we've got to prove Q. So apply HSQ. Ah, uh, oh, great. And now uh, exact HS. So... So that's that one done. Five to go. Uh, oh my goodness. Intros, intro H. Uh, okay, so intros HPQ and then HPQP. How yeah, about that? There we go. Uh, we've got to prove that something implies, well, we can only do apply HPQ now. I think that's the only possible next move. And now we've got to prove that something implies P. So we better apply HPQP, because that's the only thing that implies P. Uh, oh, and now I've got to prove that P implies Q. So we could we could do intro H we could do intro HP now, uh, but there's a trick, right? We've got to prove that P implies Q, but one of our hypotheses is that P implies Q. So we could actually just do um exact HPQ. So the kind of a cute short uh, proof of this. Now what about this nonsense? So this I'm just going to uh, intros H1, H2, H3. Uh, the only thing that applies P is H2, so apply H2. Uh, intro HQ. Now apply H1 because that's the only thing that implies R. Now intro HP. Now oh now we've got to prove Q, so exact HQ. So that does that one. Uh, this one. Oh my goodness. Intros. H1, H2, and H3. There we go. Oh! Uh, huh. So this one we have to think because there's two things that imply P. Uh, and I don't actually know which way to go. Um, oh, let's try. A, I think. Doesn't this get us there? Well, let's go for it anyway. I mean, the intro HQ because now we've we've proved it. Now we've got the hypothesis that Q is true. That sort of looks useful. And now apply H three. Now apply H two. Ah, uh, oh, bingo! Now exact HQ. So that's done that one. I should put one tactic on a line. You don't have to do that. You can just write all the tactics in a row if you like. Uh, and now what about this one? Oh, what nonsense. Intro H1, and then HP. Intros H1 and HP. Uh, apply H1 is the only thing we can do. Uh, intro HPQ. Now we're going to deduce that Q is true. Ah, oh, bingo, but we can do that. And that's, that's apply HPQ and then exact HP. So exact HPQ, HP. That would be a fancy way of doing it. And now this is the... The one that I spent ages trying to design. So let me tell you about this one, H1, H2, H3. Uh, the, the idea is that H1, H2, let's, let's move this over here so we can see what's going on. H1, H2 and H3 all, all imply R, right? But, uh, but you know, now we've got a big, so now we could do sort of apply H1. And now the question is, can we prove that? Not So now somehow H1, H2 and H3 are all useless because their conclusion uh, is that something we're, we're never going to see again. You know, this is all about H. So, you know, now you do wonder, I mean, is this actually true, right? Is is uh, Did I make a wrong turn there? Uh, so, and I can check this using the Torto tactic, right? Uh, the Torto tactic, you see, the Torto tactic has failed here. Let me, let me tell you about, the Torto tactic is the truth table tactic. Like if I do, uh, you see the Torto tactic. Would CC do it? Is CC no? You see CC isn't smart enough to do this one. The Torto tactic solves this level uh, because it just does the truth tables. It says, well, you know, P, Q, and R are either true or false, and so there's eight possibilities. So let's do all eight possibilities and uh, see what happens. So we know that we haven't made 
we know we haven't you know uh, we haven't made a bad step at this point intros h1 h2 and h3 uh, and we still we still know we haven't done anything wrong because the torto tactic still solves the goal but if we apply h1 uh, then the torto tactic stops solving the goal so that was a, that was a wrong move because uh, if the torto tactic fails this goal is not solvable right because this torto tactic is just proving it by truth you can see you can see what's going on. it sort of says uh, if p is false and if q is false um, and if R is true, uh, then I think the goal the goal turns out to be false, but all the hypotheses are true. So apply H1 doesn't work, but apply H2. Oh, now that does work because uh, the torto tactic isn't giving us an error. So the, the correct route must be apply H2. And now does CC do it? Yeah, you get it. So now, now, now it's going to be easier. Intros H1, H2. Oh, H2 should just be called HP. That would be a better name for it. Uh, uh, an H, I mean, great. Now we've got two proofs of P. Uh, we've got to prove Q, so apply H1 should be the way to go. And now we've got to prove that P implies P. Uh, so, uh, a, a, I mean, exact it, that would be a way of, there you go, look at that. If I hover over it, you can see it is uh, it is the function from, uh, it, it, it is the, uh, the proof that P implies P, for all. it's the proof that alpha implies alpha. Uh, so that that's a kind of a cocky way of finishing, but uh, of course we can just do intro HP again. So now we've got three, and we've got three proofs of P, and then apply H two. No, no, no. Oh, oh, that actually worked. I'm quite surprised it worked. Exact H two. Uh, well, there you go. And so now we've got no no warnings and no errors. Uh, so I claim that we've done that problem sheet. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, and uh, I hope that you learned uh, some cute little tips there.